I normally shy away from doing reviews, especially when someone emails me randomly asking me to check out one of their products. And SKE was one of those companies and they found their initial email in the trash bin almost immediately. However, after a couple days went by, I decided to reply back and actually ask for this specific UPS. This is a SK1500 and they sent it to me. So SKE, by the way, stands for Smart Key Energy, a company I have never heard of. Um, some of you may have heard of them out there, but I haven't. And so one of the only reasons why I accepted this one or offered to do a review, I'm gonna do my best to do a review here, was because it's a UPS and I genuinely think UPSs are good for us home labbers. Um, but generally when I buy UPSs, wow, this thing is heavy, it's probably like 25 pounds, maybe 30. Uh, but generally when I buy UPSs, thanks, thanks for uh, damaging my package there, uh, UPS. Anyway, normally when I buy UPSs, I only look at certain brands like Eaton, APC, and Cyber Power in that order. And Cyber Power, I usually look at specifically for like desktops and not so much for servers. I have in the past bought Cyber Power um, UPSs for my servers and networking equipment, but I've since gone away from that trend and I'm gonna be sticking to Eaton for the foreseeable future. But nonetheless, I still wanna check out a competing brand anyway, just to see what they might have to offer. All right, and in the box, we have our user manual here and the ugly kind of styrofoam, the one that I hate most because it sticks to everything and gets freaking everywhere. This is gonna be a mess. All right, well, not bad. Um, it looks like it was shipped with the cable wrapped underneath it and it's got some really bad marks on it, but it looks overall like this cable's thick enough and survived. Supposedly this UPS is a 900 watt UPS or UPS as I like to call them. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's not pure sine wave, it's actually um, simulated sine wave, which is a big time killer for most people or in our community, the home lab community. But I think for desktops, it's actually not that big of a deal to have simulated sine wave. I still would, like when I'm buying a UPS, I would still look for and seek one that does um, pure sine wave and not the weird stepped simulated one. You want the nice curve um, sine wave technology. So I probably wouldn't run this on my server. Or actually, I'm, not, I'm probably not going to. I'm definitely not gonna run this on any of my servers. But I think, you know, for my one of my desktops, it would be fine to do. Um, all right, so let's take a quick look around to this thing and see what all she has to offer. So flipping this thing around on the rear, we have four ports for our battery and surge protection. And then we have four additional ports for just surge protection only. This is always nice to have. And I see a lot of brands do this, so it's definitely welcome to have. Um, we also have protection for RJ45 in and out, which is cool. And then of course we have a USB interface. So you can plug this into the back of your desktop and then have the device power down safely. Now I'm not sure if that runs like with the APC U cup service or whatever it's called. Um, I'll try an interface with that um, and see if we can get a server talking to it, but I don't know for sure. Then on the front, all we have is a single power button. Uh, let's see if it turns on right now without being plugged in. Oh, it's on already. <laughs> that, was, that was fast. Oh, wait, I think it just turned off. Let me press and hold the button. Okay, now it's on without being plugged in. And it's loud, real loud. Okay, to mute this thing, it's pretty sim simple. All you have to do is press the power button once, and there's a little indicator saying that it is muted, but I wonder if it's gonna beep anyway uh, when it's not plugged in. It shouldn't, but you never know. Okay, it's unmuted now, so we should hear it uh, beep again to letting me know that it's not plugged in. Uh, I don't know if we wait, should wait for that. In the meantime, we should, okay, there it goes. 
we should open this thing up and see what kind of batteries are inside and also like what the internal components of this are. I mean, we're gonna have to open it up anyway because if we have to replace the batteries, we need to know how to do that. I'm gonna turn this thing off. Wow, that turned off quick. So to open it up, it looks like we have screws on both the right and left side of the UPS and then one, two, three, four on the rear and it looks like the shell should pop right off. Um, yeah, that, yeah. Okay, uh, it turns out there's actually four more screws on the bottom that looks like they need to be removed before we remove the shell. So I haven't removed my shell yet. It looks like the uh, warranty void if broken sticker is already broken here. That's probably just by the way that it was placed and not because I've actually opened this thing. So keep that in mind in the future if you try to do an RMA for this. As soon as you get it, check to see if that uh, warranty ward, <laughs> boy, that warranty void if removed or broken sticker is already broken because I literally haven't touched mine and it's broken already. And that's probably uh, due to shipping more than likely because this has a, an aluminum frame. Um, that is flexing quite a lot already, and I'm just unscrewing it. Okay, wow, that just slides right back. That's that's awesome. Holy cow. Uh, okay, this may be designed not to come on. So I'm not an electrical engineer, but this is the PCB that controls this beast. Um, so I'm just gonna take a look at it with you guys. I don't really, I can't really comment on to what does what. Uh, I can really only point out what I see uh, and that I know of what they are for sure. So it looks like we have a heat sink here and then some sort of maybe grounding. Maybe it's, I'm not sure what's going on here, why that's attached to the heat sink. Um, it seems pretty well built uh, in my opinion. I used to know what those were, those were called back there, but I can't remember. I think they have to do with like temperature monitoring and different kinds of monitoring tools. All right, before we move this, actually, I'm gonna disconnect power. Uh, I did loosen that, it didn't just come right off. I loosened it first. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, finish taking this off so we can get a better look at the PCB. I don't know if you guys noticed the flex on camera, but it looks like the PCB is also supporting some rigidity to the frame. So it looks like it's connected, per connected. I'd have to disconnect all these cables. I don't know if I wanna do that just to look at the underbelly of this. So yeah, I'm not going to. I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'll let somebody else who may be curious uh, do that in the future. I wanna take a quick second to mention that I did cut myself and am bleeding a little bit. Not all of these surface are sh surfaces are shaved down. It looks like some of them are a little, are still kind of sharp, but generally speaking, um, they're all sanded or are made in such a way where you're not gonna cut yourself. So I'm not sure exactly where I cut myself, but I'd say overall, it's still pretty safe uh, from what I've seen. Now, it does also look like you're gonna, in order to remove the batteries, you do actually have to remove the shell and then uh, unplug all of the uh, cables or all of the power or else you're not gonna get the battery removed. All right, and it also looks like in order to remove the front plate to get access to batteries, you have to unscrew four screws, two at the top, and there's one right there. I know that's hard to see, but I really can't do any better. And then another one on this side right there. That's good news, the screws are magnetic, so. That should be easy to reinstall in the future. Being very careful not to touch any of this here, I believe, although everything's unplugged, I believe that those are definitely electrical components. I don't want to shock myself. Okay, and I just learned that apparently that is not the way to gain access to the batteries. The heck do you remove the batteries on this thing? I don't, 
I don't understand. So the faceplate doesn't... I mean, you can remove the faceplate, but there's... It's blocked in, so... Okay. There's some screws on bottom. Let, let's find out. All right, I think I figured it out. So we need to remove two screws. One's here, and one is there. So both of those need to be removed. And then there are two screws on the bottom of the unit that need to be removed as well. I'm gonna start with unscrewing these. I'm starting to understand why they only have a one year warranty on these batteries and a two year warranty on the units because they don't really want you replacing this apparently on your own anyway. All right, man, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get electrocuted. It looks like we also need to remove the PCB uh, via those four screws I mentioned earlier. So I'm gonna undo that again. All right, so, man, I'm gonna electrocute myself. I'm just gonna, all right, we gotta disconnect the front LCD panel. Okay, that, that wasn't too bad. That came out relatively easily. Just tuck this away. And let's see if we can just pull that out of the way. It looks like if I really wanted to, I could unscrew both of these from the heat sinks and that would allow me, I guess, easier access to the battery unit, but this is this is already a huge pain in the butt. I I can't really tell you, I, I don't really want, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone already. All right, let's unplug that. Let's grab this, oh my God. It's terrible. I hate it. All right, it, this bracket's free now. So that's what's holding the batteries down into the chassis, and then we can just remove. I need two hands for this, and now we can just remove the batteries themselves. Bam! And see where they stick in here. Hey, at least they gave us sealed lead acid batteries, so that way you can lay this thing on its side and upside down any which way you don't have to worry about it leaking okay i'm i'm already done with this unit i it's a not user serviceable at least i mean i guess it technically is but not in a good way i, I really don't want to continue on with this this i didn't think it would be this bad but comparing this to like my f more favorite brands of ups upside uh like cyber power and apc and pretty much everyone else i've used um <laughs> the batteries just are on like a sled typically or you remove the front fascia here and then you just have access to the batteries this is absolutely terrible someone's gonna like shock themselves for sure or break this pcb or bend one of the pins for the lc the front lcd and then that will never work again it's just this is this is just poor design unfortunately um, I'm gonna try and get it reconnected so we can at least see what the battery life is like, which I kind of don't want to really do. I am not having a good time. Oh, I'm not sure how I feel about the PCB being a part of the frame or supporting the frame. Like it's not terrible, but like if you, most people when they buy UPS, they keep it for years and years and years. And you know, like I don't think this thing would survive very many moves, uh, especially if you consider the fact that you're probably gonna have to take it apart to replace the batteries once every blue moon. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, it's probably not gonna last forever. I'm not an engineer. It could be fine. The PCB doesn't appear to be flexing in any negative way. At least everything's flat and even. Okay, it's flexing there, but that's only because I didn't. I can't screw it down any better than that. Uh, <laughs> it just sparked. <laughs> I think I may have killed the unit. I don't know how. I'm guessing something's touching somewhere it's not supposed to be. That's not cool. At least I didn't shock myself. That wouldn't have felt very good. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if I want to plug any electronics into this.
I think I think I broke it. I think I broke it. Let's uh let's get it fully re reassembled and try it out. Okay. I didn't kill it. Awesome. I wonder why it sparked then. All right. See what happens. You start just pushing this button repeatedly. Nothing. Okay. So we can only silence it. Okay. Yeah. There's no pre-silencing. So the only way I can find to silence this is to unplug it from the wall and then silence it. Um, I guess we have to use their software to interface with this thing to actually configure because like Input is 120 volt amp 120 output so I mean yeah, that's useful, but it'd be better if you could at least cycle it to watts All right before I just call it quits here I want to plug something into this thing and, and hopefully not blow it up my laptop But if it does blow up, that's okay. I don't care about it I want. I really want to know what the screen displays if it only displays uh, voltage in it or VAC. Switch. Oh, I unplugged it. Let's switch sides real quick. I guess the laptop was a bad choice because it's. I guess it has battery in it still, so it's not actually pulling power from this unit. All right. I guess if I'm gonna kill something, it may as well be something that I'm never gonna use. No useful information on the front. Well, that's kind of a shame. Even with uh like a cyber power UPS, you'd be able to see some data about how much wattage is being output, um, which is nice to see because you can always like kind of gauge like, you know what, how much um, wattage each of your devices are without having to look it up. And this one doesn't seem to do anything useful. All right, you know what, I just, I don't even feel like continuing on with this. I'm not, I'm, not disappointed I'm just not interested in this anymore like uh, I don't even want to test out the software on the USB-C side okay I, I'm done I, I'm done I, I was gonna give it one last go here and download the SKE software uh, software to manage the UPS and connect it all well apparently it's blocked by my ad guard I'm sorry not ad guard pie hole so I can't go to their website uh, but I do want to show you this so if I get off my home network and uh, go to their website to download uh, Windows, uh, the executable. It takes me to some other random website, pan.baidu.com. I can't read Chinese. There's, I, I assume this is probably some sort of login or something. I don't know. Uh, so, so we're done. We're we're done here. Do not buy this UPS. Uh, it's probably not worth it. It's probably fine to use, in all honesty, if you can use it, but uh, I'm not gonna, I can't recommend it to anybody. So don't, don't buy it. Uh, sorry, uh, SKE, that you had to find out this way. Uh, better luck next time, I guess, if there will be a next time. Uh, I'm sorry. All right, everyone, end of this video. <sighs> See y'all later.